The second disease we are going to look at is fallpox. And fallpox is also a viral disease of chicken that is characterized by lesions that form on the unfeathered parts of the body of the bird. We will also find lesions on the oral cavity and the trachea system. We have two forms of fallpox. We have the dry pox and the wet pox. As we can see on our diagram, the striking difference between the two forms of the disease. The dry form of the cutaneous pox is the most common form of fallpox. The pox lesions will appear as small and what like growths that appear on the unfeathered areas of the bird's body, like the face, the wattles, eyelids, and the feet. These small lesions will appear yellow at first in color and will gradually increase in size. The lesions will also change color as they grow larger and turn into a dark brown color, look very rough, and will be dry. These dry scabs will contain the pox virus and will be very highly infectious to other flock members. The other form is the diphtheric or what we refer to as the wet pox. This one is associated with high mortality in birds and it causes lesions in the inner mouth and the throat of the bird. They usually start as tiny white nodules that will then merge to form raised yellow white cheesy patches as you have seen on our diagram. If the lesions are located in the upper digestive and respiratory tract, it may cause the chickens to reduce their feed intake and also have difficulties in swall swallowing. We may also observe other respiratory signs depending on the severity of the disease. How is fallpox transmitted? Fallpox is transmitted to flocks by biting insects especially mosquitoes and also when we introduce a new bird into the flock who had been infected with the virus and recovered but is now shedding the virus in the environment. Once a flock member is infected the chicken can transmit the virus to other flock members through scratches or broken skin. The dried pox scabs that fall off the chicken during the disease can also serve as a source of infection to other chicken in the flock. The virus can survive in the dried scabs for months or even years. Prevention and treatment of fallpox. We have mentioned that fallpox is a viral disease and therefore there is no known specific treatment for the same. When we have an infection in the flock, the best we can do is offer supportive treatment using broad spectrum antibiotics that will help reduce the infection and avoid mortalities, as well as practice hygiene and biosecurity measures. For prevention, the sure way out is to ensure that we vaccinate our birds at the recommended schedule for fallpox. It is important also to control mosquitoes and other biting insects in our environment, as we have seen they are the main cause of spreading the disease within the flock. It is important to isolate new birds for a month or so when you bring them into your flock just to ensure that they are of good health before you mix them with your other birds. We cannot insist more on practicing hygiene and biosecurity measures around our farms so that we keep disease pressures at the lowest possible. The next disease we are going to look at is Marex. Marex disease is also a viral disease of chicken that mostly affects the nervous system. So what are the signs you are going to observe to know that you have an infection of Marex in your flock? The birds show signs of progressive paralysis, usually in the legs or the wings. Often the birds look like it's doing splits. You notice one leg dragging behind or both legs are paralyzed and in the opposite direction. As you can see on our diagram, you'll also notice twisting of the head to one side or backward, respiratory problems such as labored breathing. You'll also notice a darkened or purple comb due to lack of oxygen. Remember that the neck is twisted 
you're having respiratory problems, so oxygen circulation is a challenge. In progressive stages, you'll observe diarrhea. And if you look at the eye closely, you'll notice that it is gray in color. And you can also notice lesions around the feather follicles of the bird if you're keen enough to look at that as well. How is the disease transmitted? Marek's disease is transmitted by infected pottery dust that is being inhaled by the chicken in the pottery house or the chicken coop. Pottery dust, in this case, is a mixture of different things here and there, such as the bird feeds, the beddings, droppings, and old feathers. How then do you prevent and treat Marex? We say that it is a viral disease, therefore there is no treatment. The sure way of prevention is to ensure that your flock is vaccinated as per the recommended schedules. Birds that recover from the disease become carriers. It is very important to note that. Marex vaccine is given on day one of the chick's life and mostly this will be done at commercial hatcheries. If you are a private farmer or a small scale holder farmer doing this at home, then you can skip Marex. It is very hard to find a dosage, especially in the market, that can be used at home. Like we said, it is usually given in the hatcheries. Another way to prevent Marex spreading is not to add any additional birds to your existing flock. Most of the times, we'll get to buy new birds in the market or get gifted by our friends and we bring them and mix them with our birds, not knowing what the history of the birds was. And in this way, we introduce a disease like Marex into the flock. Always good housekeeping, biosecurity and ventilation are essential tools in your fight against a disease such as Marex. The next disease we are going to look at is Gumboro or IBD that is infectious basal disease. This is a highly contagious viral infection that is found in chicken. It is important to note that the virus that causes this disease is extremely hardy and can survive in a wide range of environmental conditions. Therefore, it becomes very difficult to eliminate once you have it in your flock. What are the signs you'll observe to know you have a Gumboro infection? There's going to be a rapid drop in feed and water consumption. You're going to notice that the birds have ruffled feathers. They will have an unsteady gait or the birds will be sitting in a hatched up position. Sometimes you'll notice the birds are picking at their own vent. And very important to notice is that they, they will sleep with their beaks touching the floor. They are also going to have diarrhea, which soils the back or rather their vent feathers. What are the prevention or treatment measures to take in place if you notice you have Gumboro? We said it is a viral infection, therefore we don't have a treatment for IBD. What we do is give supportive therapies such as vitamins and antibiotics to treat for any secondary bacterial infections that may occur when the disease is on heavy impact on the flock. Prevention is always through good biosecurity measures and vaccination. We cannot insist further for farmers to adhere to vaccination schedules. Unfortunately, most farmers will skip vaccinating against IBD and movement of birds from one farm to the other will then increase the risk of an outbreak. Always when you bring new birds to the property, isolate them for at least 30 days and this gives you a chance to be able to observe and see if they are showing any of these signs. That way, you reduce the chances of introducing diseases to your flock.